Oh god, you're recording. Really? I don't remember authorizing a recording. Well, we'll make a good outtake video, I suppose. UO does flight school. Yeah, seriously. Alright, so welcome to the Rotary Ring Aircraft Pilot Training Course. Um, this is not going to make you a better pilot. I'm just going to start that off right now. We're going to help you with certain skills, certain tactics, but the only thing that will make you a better pilot is to fucking fly. A lot. Constant practice uh, in the mission editor, uh, getting the missions. You know, if you see Dami on the server, hop in that sucker and just fly. <laughs> Um, anyone taking this course, you know, means you probably want to help by flying uh, utility aircraft. We're not covering any attack aircraft, although many of the procedures and tactics do apply to any helicopter. Uh, but this is really, we're just concentrating right now on the basic essentials of what you need to know for flying utility aircraft, uh, often designated with a U at the beginning of the aircraft's name, uh, although that is not a rule of thumb. Generally, uh, we try to make sure everybody's done the land nav course. Um, and it's not so much that you need it for this class, it's that you should have it as a pilot. Um, so most of you uh, say that you're at least very familiar with it or watch the videos. Uh, if you haven't taken it, even if you think you got it, I strongly suggest taking it because there's a lot of little details that you, uh, you learn in that class. Uh, during this course, we're going to learn the flight mechanics behind helos, characteristics commonly used aircraft, as well as their armament uh, and uh, crew complement. Uh, you're also going to learn basic maneuvers and tactics, uh, as well as some uh, emergency procedures. And uh, the why of the course, of course, being, uh, being able to fly from point A to point B is not enough. Many times people will hop into the pilot slot because it's cool. Um, and you think you're the shit, uh, you want to be that guy that's doing all the cool flying, uh, oftentimes <laughs> this just ends badly, um, and anyone uh, who thinks they're at that level, you're not. Um, you know, Deathstrike, I think, is probably one of the better pilots uh, here in this community, uh, but even he fucks up and can always learn. Hey, Mago, can I interject real quick? One second, oh. but for a question. What's up? I, I finished my training, and uh, I think a couple of them would like to join this training. Do they still have time to come in, or? Um, yes, if they hurry. Um, I think we've okay. still got a couple slots open. Okay, Just I'll go ahead and in. tell them. All right. One sec. And also, that one time with an H6 was totally an accident. I swear. <laughs> I seem to recall you aiming for goats. No, I was aiming for the cash. <laughs> Back on the testing server again? Uh, yes, yeah. we're on testing server. Sweet. It's, it's not my fault they didn't give the H6 a gun sight. <laughs> well, it depends on what mission you play. I think some of the SOCOMs do. Well, there's two models of the H6. There's the old Ace one and the new Operation Arrowhead one. The Operation Arrowhead one has a nice dot scribbled onto the front of the canopy. The Ace one doesn't. <laughs> you mean the Sharpie mark? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, okay, um... Who else do we have joining us? Uh, well, Holly's coming in. Anyone else? What's the uh, pattern? Burns. Like it burns so good. Excellent. Your accident was excellent. Uh, looks like Wahali is the only one to join our channel so far. Yeah. Excellent. Boone's just finishing up. So, uh. Might be a couple others. I'd say something, but Mongo keeps staring at me. <laughs> this is like, I've only flown choppers in this game, like, a handful of times, so... Well, you're in the right place, then. It's better I'm... to be here than in the book. Oh, 
<laughs> it's pointing right at you, dude. Oh. Clarification here. The book is a book. It is the book that holds all pilots who have failed to fly at UO. It's a reference for many mission leaders in who they pick as a pilot in large-scale co-ops and TVTs. How you get into the book depends entirely on how you fuck up. How you get out of it depends entirely on how you fucked up and how you f and how you improve after that. It's not the be-all and end-all, it's just the general case of you don't want to fuck up because you don't want to be in the book. Capish? Yep. Just thought I'd get that out of the way. Yeah, looks for me. Uh, yeah. No crashes or herp derping in, well, no herp derping allowed, but no crashes or silliness in here will get you in the bug. This is considered a no bug zone. Though, obviously, if you're shot down and you can't save the aircraft in the best, that stuff is, you know, shit happens. Yep, though, uh, typically at the end of this course, people who have been catastrophically damaged in their choppers should still be able to put it down without killing their crew. The book is not like a gang. You can eventually get out of it. Yeah, there's yeah, someone who disagrees with that. I got a bigger book. Can't tell you that. That's against the rules. Yes, yeah, so the book is very secretive. Um, Alright, so... I'm just going to lay this out really quick. A good pilot, in my book, has nothing to do with your apparent skill. With how cool a maneuver you can do, how fast you can fly, how low you can fly. It is about somebody who can get the job done, who can fly from point A to point B, accomplish their tasking without wrecking their chopper, without killing the crew, or endangering any passengers. So, keep that in mind that it's not always the best thing to be fast. Um, a lot of times, taking uh, the slower approach, or really planning your route carefully, not to go in a straight line to your target, uh, is great. And never, never, ever, ever listen to your passengers. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about, and they will yell at you, come on, go faster, faster, faster. Just tell them to jump out if they want to get there faster. Um, the wearer of this class, you will play the skills as a pilot during operations conducted by UL, as well as possibly many other games with Helo Simulation. Basic rules and tactics uh, presented in this course are not specific to Arma 2, and will be usable any time you've presented with the challenge of flying a rotary aircraft in a simulated combat environment. Now, obviously, Arma 2 is not the most accurate simulator. It's better than, you know, Battlefield or many of the other first-person shooter games, but it will not uh, simulate a lot of things you, you can't get away with. For instance, uh, the majority of pilots that I've seen fly here at UL would have ripped their rotors off in the first five minutes of flight. Uh, and if you play any of the other uh, sims... Uh, that are more hardcore, like uh, Black Hawk, or not Black Hawk, uh, is it Black, Black Shark? Shark? Yeah, Black Shark. Uh, I, I dare you to try that, because it'll give you a new appreciation for the actual mechanics of flight. Rotor Clash is a bitch. You want to try that at, uh, whatever the... Uh, the take on the, helicopters. Yeah, take on helicopters. Beast. Yeah, Sounds take good. on helicopters is what you'll find the armor free flying physics will be like, so oh, man. practice soon. That involves true cyclic action, but we'll come to that later. Yep, yep. Alright, so I'm just going to go over briefly the roles. Uh, understanding, the roles of util you, blah, understanding the roles of utility helicopters. Uh, your roles can change from mission to mission. The great thing about these headbirds is that they're very flexible in their tasking. Um, you're going to do everything from troop transportation, medevac, combat stores transportation, vehicle sling loading, reconnaissance, and combat air support. Um, so on troop transportation, uh, that's the one probably most everyone's familiar with and often is the job where you're essentially a flying bus, um, just moving troops back and forth. It requires just as much attention to detail as any of the other roles, um, but it's probably the easier of the roles. There's three main ways that you uh, often will deliver your troops. Uh, one is ground insertion, that's simply landing on your target. Uh, LZ, fast rope insertion, uh, in which you will perform a stable hover, 
over a designated LZ, and your troops will jump out on ropes and drop to the ground, and your crew chief will then release the ropes, and you will fly away. Uh, and then Halo insertion, uh, which the term Halo for that is a little questionable most of the time, uh, but it essentially just means people are jumping out of the helicopter with parachutes. Uh, as a pilot, I feel like it's your job to be a voice of reason in understanding what your roles are, what your limitations are, and uh, what's safe and smart. So if a mission commander is asking you to perform a halo insertion, or not a halo insertion, a fast rope insertion over a large open field surrounded by enemy, you should tell him no. Tell him this is a very bad idea. Halo is designed, or, uh, fast rope is designed specifically to get troops into tight, to, uh, tight areas where the helicopter cannot come down safely. Uh, reference uh, the movie Black Hawk Down, you know, aside from the whole crashing part, you know, they're not able to land the helos on those streets safely, so they stop just above it, throw out the ropes, and troops faster up in. Halo insertions uh, are not used all the time, but uh, they will allow you to insert special ops teams uh, or even large forces uh, quickly from high altitude. Uh, and that's pretty straightforward. The only trick with that is make sure you're not in a dive when people are jumping out. Medevac, uh, those are the basics. Uh, we'll kind of touch on most of those later. Uh, sling loading and uh, combat stores transportation. That's, you know, simple transport. Uh, Ace supports all this stuff. You should go out of game and practice these things. Um, any questions before I move on to phase two? Side note. Happy impulse. Um, side note on the load options you will need two people to do any of those tests you need someone to pilot the helicopter and correct but that's just the reason why you can always group up again jump on the old server load up the uo training map and do all of that all right phase two knowing your bird um birds vary uh from chassis to chassis, but they are all have uh, many uh, characteristics that are the same, perhaps a slightly different. Uh, so let's walk over to the Black Hawk and take a quick look at her. This is the UH-60 Black Hawk uh, in UO. It's probably the most commonly employed helicopter. Uh, currently in service, it is a very commonly employed helicopter. Um, we're going to go over the parts of it really quick. Uh, I just want to see who can identify what. Can anybody tell me the cockpit? That's probably the easy one. You mean what it is on the picture? Yes, point me towards the cockpit. <laughs> and define the area the cockpit encompasses. The front part, the two windows extending front and the side. And the uh, bottom, left and right each side. Uh, two seats. Correct. Uh, so the cockpit is just the pilot area. Um, it's where all the control surfaces are uh, and where you spend all your time. Um, does anybody besides Rambo know what the fuel slodge is? Yeah, that's the uh, body of the rest of the uh, aircraft. So uh, the center going all the way back, not including the, uh, the stabilizers at the back or the uh, rotors. Correct. Landing gear, this is obvious. Um, the thing to note is that on certain aircraft, we have wheeled landing gear, uh, as well as tail wheels. This is something that you want to be very aware of when you're flying, uh, especially when landing, in that certain aircraft will allow you to tail down first or to come in at a slight angle when you're touching down uh, without endangering uh, your tail rotor or the rear of your aircraft. For instance, the Black Hawk, uh, you know, the H. H60 variants all have tail wheels. Uh, your Chinook has rear wheels that will cover you. The uh, Little Bird does not, uh, and the uh, Huey does not. So when you're flying the Little Bird or Huey or other similar aircraft that do not have a tail wheel or tail uh, landing gear, you gotta be really careful or you can come in at too much of an angle and dig a hole with your tail rotor. Um, main rotor, anybody. Well, yeah, the big rotor on top. 
Correct. Anti torque rotor. Well, the smaller one at the back. Excellent. And uh, does anybody can describe what the anti torque rotor actually does? As you add, as you add a collective, the engine will uh, increase power, wanting to make the fuselage spin to the right, and the anti torque will uh, correct that and keep it from spinning. Correct. Um, all right, and something that a lot of people don't know about that is modeled in Arma correctly is uh, gearbox linkages. Uh, essentially, we're not talking about the place where you store gear, but the main rotor, tail rotor, and engine are all connected via gears and linkages. What this means is that if you lose engine power, but your main rotors are still spinning, it will continue to, uh, due to the bird essentially falling through the air and spinning the blades, it will continue to spin the tail rotor because they are linked by gears. So you can, without power, continue to maintain control with your anti-torque. Um, the aircraft safety rules, and well, actually, let me just, any questions about parts of the bird before I go on? Can I make a note about the anti-torque? Uh, sure. Uh, the anti-torque does not work by uh, going faster or slower to uh, work. It, mo it works by varying the pitch of the blades. So if you're auto rotating, that's how it uh, allows you to maintain maintain control. Right. Also, that also applies to the main rotors on the helicopter. There's, yeah, yeah. There's a whole oh, session oh. we're gonna go over uh, for that. Any questions about the uh, body of the uh, helicopter? 